but let's th- does the show start it already yes oh well let's but let's pretend it was for us let's pretend that he wrote it for us wait are you saying that you were gonna lie to people and I'm like not, if we hadn't been on the show already you wouldn't have said pretend you would say let's lie to people and tell them that danny wrote it for us that's not but, what i would have said ooh, so nice. i really feel like hey thanks Giorgio. Thanks, Giorgio. Giorgio is by far, he's the man behind the scenes that yeah. makes us look good. Um, well, he makes us look as good as possible. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can only put so much lipstick on a pig, mm-hmm. especially two You can of put them. a, uh, what did I used to say? You can put a top hat on a turd, but it's still a piece of shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, that's that's definitely a, a Danism. Yeah. That's a Danism. It does sound right like there. something I would say. Um, man, it's, uh, it's, been, it's, been, it's kind of been a crazy week. I mean, um, I just got off shift this morning. Yep. And, you know, it's uh, I was watching the news and just trying to keep up with all. There's so much shit going on right now, but people are loving the podcast, man. Mm -hmm. I think I think I think the one thing I underestimated was is just how much that this is what people were looking for. Right. Like, yeah, I think I didn't I I honestly didn't think it was going to that people were going to want it this much. No, I think it's uh, I think we're starting to see now with a lot of this independent media, what the silent majority truly is like. There's been this. Uh, this widely held belief since Nixon that the silent majority are just conservative Americans who yeah. don't talk about anything and they just vote conservative. I think the silent majority are people who are too busy. They're smart. So they're investing in stuff that actually matters. They're living their lives day to day and they're too busy doing that stuff to engage in any of this stupid bullshit. So the silent majority probably are the biggest group among yeah. us and they're the people who think the most critically, yeah. but they've had no home for a very long time now, 30, 40 years at least. Yeah, they've I've had no political home and it's uh you know you're starting to see it now because people any it, it's a it's it's an intellectual power vacuum and people start reaching out to things like QAnon and all this other stuff that's kind of ha- like wonky and weird and stuff like that, but they and, and even the libertarians who have, you know, it, it's a third option, yeah, but it's not a great option and but but any option other than the status quo seems attractive at this point and that's a real problem, right? Yeah. No, for sure. I mean, I, I, I'll tell you, like, I don't know why it, it, it just hit me, you know, probably last night I was thinking about the show today and, you know, this is, this is, I feel like the American party is going to represent the 90% or let's just say 80%. Let's just go at 80% of, of the American people. And I think me and you've already talked about it is, is that, um, you know, we're going to come up with the fundamentals in mm-hmm. the next couple of weeks of, of what the basis is to the American party. I mean, and, and this is the things that mo- the majority of Americans will agree on, right? Like I always look at these issues that the, the Republicans and Democrats are bringing out. And I'm always thinking you guys are really, you're making decisions on guiding the ship of America. Right. And these are the issues that you feel like are, yeah, are the most, are, important. Are the most yeah. important. Like it's yeah. insane. And I, I think that, that what we're going to be able to do with the American party is, is, give people like you said a place to go because mm-hmm. how many times like how many times you know you as a listener how often do you go and vote and do you go and and classify your something yourself as, as one of the parties because mm-hmm. that's the only two but you are classifying yourself as a party because it's the 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 least worst of the two right, right? i yeah. mean how much have you heard of that like i mean that's the, the majority last- to be honest the majority of people i talk to uh until re- relatively recently, a lot of conservatives are super anti-left right now. And I think it's mostly because of the encroachment of uh, just weird things, socialist stuff that yeah. just has no place in, in modern life. Um, and I get that. But for the most part, people, in the, and particularly in the middle, but people in general have very frequently like held their nose and swallowed the medicine for whichever party was at least in some way aligned with their beliefs. But that that's that is a fundamental misunderstanding of how we are designed to collectively build ideas and govern ourselves um and that's why you see these political revolutions they always fail right Mm -hmm. and in some way or another they always fail and they either fizzle out and don't uh achieve any power or they get power and it's immediately corrupted and that's what communist is communism is it's what fascism is um the thing that i like about this idea is that it's not a political party, but it's also not uh, a political revolution designed to gain power. Like there's no power at the end. There's no, there's no pot of gold at the end of this rainbow for us, aside from getting to the best solution for our country. So our idea is rather to eliminate unearned power and then return it to the people 
and the truth to the people, I mean, that's right? It, that's, that's the whole the, point. Instead of instead of this idea of smoking mirrors, that what we have right now is we the people, because it's mm. not. It's it's we the people get what the government tells us we get right now, right? Right. And that's exact. Mm. That's the exact opposite of of what this this idea of democracy was built on. And I just don't think. And, and call me simple minded. I mean, I am a marine, so um, that's true. Yeah, it's true, right? But. I just don't think that the issues in America are that complicated. I just don't think that the problems are that complicated. I think the solutions might be complicated, mm -hmm. but I think that when you narrow down what the problems are, I think we can all agree with what the problems are on 95% of, the, of, of the problems, right? right now, how we, how we get this done is, is, is all, you know, everybody's everybody else's idea. Right. But, and is up for, up for discussion. But I do think that, I'll never forget. I was speaking at, at this at this place probably four years ago, mm -hmm. and I was giving this speech. I, and I was talking. They were asking me about America, and they're like, "What do you think about what's going on and this and that?" Right. And um, I, I just I, I remind people every single day that no matter what you're reading on the news, we live in the greatest country on the face of the planet. Right. Period. Like like Mexico's not putting walls up for us. Right. And, Look, and, and it, this is a good way to to pe people will ask you when you say something like that. Well, what are we the greatest at? That is incorrect. So what, what let's we, say let LeBron James is probably still the best player in the NBA. Uh, and if he wasn't, let's say at the height of his career, he definitely was. So yeah, let's say LeBron sure. James at the height of his career goes out and has a bad game. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That doesn't mean he's no longer the best player, even though we have issues in this country and we have them frequently and we're working through a lot of them right now. I'll tell you, it's the idea. It's the principle that we are better. Our ethos man, is better. Our ideals I'll are tell you better. This, name one country on the face of the planet. That's freer than America. Name one freer, country. That, how that, do you quantify something like that? I mean, like you that, can though. walk out on the streets, say yeah. whatever you want. I mean, there, can, there's been a lot be of criticism whatever. of, uh, of that statement of you America can, is the free, like we, we are the freest country because there are a ton of free countries technically, yeah. but you see a lot of them, like one of two of the ones that are referenced quite frequently are actually the UK and uh, Australia, right? Like just examples yeah. of modern, but uh, Australia is trying to do some of the same things that are happening here with regard to banning certain types of speech. Yeah. You cannot ban words ever. No, ever. You cannot ever ban any word. Ever. I don't care how offensive or harmful it is. You cannot ban words. Nope. And it happens in the UK quite a bit as well. They also don't have uh, Second Amendment rights in most of these countries that we're talking about. So when the, when the time, I mean, it seems okay for now because everybody's getting along. You don't plan for the best. You plan for the worst and you hope for the best. You know what I mean? And as Dave Chappelle so eloquently put it, the First Amendment's important. The second one's there to make sure uh, just in case the uh, First Amendment doesn't work out, right? And that's why I like doing this show. I like to go back and listen to the, uh, particularly to the opening bits that yep. we do here because it helps me, it helps me kind of stay on track and develop what I think the ethos of the American party should be, what, what the, the framing principles. And there's a couple of things. I was actually listening to some of them last night. And uh, this is partly from things we say, partly from dialogue, with uh with the fans and points that they've made to me and 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 various comments on YouTube and Instagram and shit, but uh <clears throat> some of the things there's three that I've picked out right now. The first one is uh, you owe as much to this country as you should expect out of it, and you should that should be the way you live your life with regard to everything, whether it's athletics, you're gonna get as good a result as you put effort into it. Typically speaking, all every, other things being equal. The other, the next thing is uh, <clears throat> follow the truth and do what's best for America, regardless of your political affiliation, regardless of how it makes you personally look. If you're wrong for eight out of 10 hours, and then all of a sudden in hour nine, you figure out the truth and you aren't willing to admit it, even though it would make things better because it harms you personally, then you are a coward and yep. you don't deserve the blood that's been shed to make sure this flag stays flying over our country. Uh, the last thing is you should come into every conversation with more questions than you have answers yes. because there aren't look there's there's not no nobody's got all the answers here and there's it's a, it would be impossible for one person to have all the answers because all these situations are so different there's 330 to 350 million people in this country and one human being is not going to have all the answers because you can't collect data from 350 million people you need people individuals who represent those and that's the way our government's set up right people who represent those groups, those all the way down to the smallest possible level, 
that are reporting up, talking about issues, and we collectively try to solve them in a way that suits most people most of the time. That is their, that's the role of, of government. So how you can't, you can't negotiate if you come to the table with an answer already, because that's not negotiation. All you're doing is trying to, I'm trying to get you to come to my side mm -hmm. and you're trying to get me to come to your side, but really there is a solution that works. We should collectively be yeah. trying to find that solution, not arguing against each other about who's right. That doesn't yeah. make any sense. No, I mean, I think, I think, you know, I, I totally agree. I mean, you should definitely have more questions and answers, right? Um, you should definitely come with ideas and proposed answers, though. I mean, I, I think that, you know, c coming coming with a problem and not even having an idea for what the solution yeah, is, is nothing, absolutely. is nothing less than bitching, you're right? Just, you're just complaining. You're just complaining. Point, yeah. And so I, you know, I, I, I agree. I mean, I think that in America right now, but but the other piece of it is, is you're, if you're always looking for something to have a problem with, right. you're always <clears> going to find a problem. I mean, you're always going to find a problem. I, I think that... Um, I mean, think of a drill sergeant walking through a barracks room. Yeah. He'll find something. He will find something. There's no question about it. Yeah. I mean, I, I yeah. I mean, I still go back to... Um, we live in a country where most countries around the world would dream to have the problems that we're sitting here bitching about, right? Right. What would you say? What would you say the top five problems that if you went out to the, a, a person on the street right now and you said just two, just pick mm -hmm. two. What, what do you think will be their top two top two issues right now? Um, I mean, one would obviously be COVID, and Co the other, obviously COVID. The other one would be just healthcare in general. I think healthcare in general. So yeah. you got you got to wear a mask right now. Right. I mean, businesses are starting to open back up. Yep. Right. I mean, the I mean, uh, business, but only because federal courts have ruled that they can't shut down your business. Well, right. Otherwise, the government would continue to do what it is they do, and that's enforce their will regardless of your opinion. Yep. And there's nothing to back that. No. no. Um, what would you say the second one would be? Um, you know, honestly, it's probably, I mean, the, the economy is usually the number one predictor without the news, without the news, like take the news out of it where people aren't getting information. You're, you're talking about something that's wrong that people feel like needs yeah, to be people corrected. Are like, this, this is why America is not good right now. This is the problem with America, <clears throat> right? Uh, that's a good question. I think it would, it would depend on who you ask. If you ask the average person, uh, I think their answer to number two, if you take healthcare out of it, cause the, look, the economy is pretty good. So if you're getting a good read on on someone, we're, uh, the economy is good, except for all the businesses that have been shut down because of shutdowns uh, that'll never reopen. But in general, we're the Dow's back up to 28.5, and 401ks are looking really good. Our uh, trade deficit with all of our major trade partners are in our favor right now. So it, all the bellwethers of a good economy are there, um, except for the shutdown related stuff. So I would have to assume people would respond either some kind of social justice answer or uh you know or or it, be, or it would be the discourse people don't feel like they have news anywhere i think it would probably be one of those two things because but I, are, I get more of all the things that i like i do all these shows per week on different like i do one with kill cliff as well i do these and and the thing that i get ask the most is how do you find real information that's the yeah. question that i most frequently get asked no matter what it's in regard to and you know i've thought about actually doing a show one day where i just let people follow me around the internet and how i search for things and verify things and then maybe i type out or or even say out loud my explanation for it um <clears throat> because how to think and how to gather information and how to how to how to put pieces together to form an opinion uh, and do all that work while still maintaining your ego a little bit and realizing that I made all these connections and they may or may not be true. I need to go out and verify those. One of the best ways to verify it is to crowdsource. I say these things For out sure. loud and then people react to me and say, well, what did you think about this? I'm like, you know what? I didn't think about that actually. Yeah. And that changes my entire perspective now. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I do the same thing, but I, I, but honestly, I can look at these articles and tell what's bullshit and what's not. What's the fluff part of it and what's not. All these articles have usually a couple common pieces and then pick those out. The, yeah. the, they, ha they have to be factually true right. somewhere, right? If they're any major news source because they would be gone. Right. There's an editor that's looking at the, any of the major ones. Now, you know, um, so, I mean, I, I'm the same way. And then what I do is I also put some logic to it, right? Like right. not emotions. I take the, you got you have to separate the emotions out of any of this. You can't right. find truth with emotions. No, I, I think that's a big problem for people in, uh, on the left right now. But I think it's been a big problem historically for conservatives. Uh, we, for, for some reason, uh, we've gotten to a point in society where people just 
cannot be honest with one another or, yeah. or themselves. So it's, it's one thing to lie to each other. It's another thing to lie to yourself. Like there, it is, there is no question that just think about these things and look, these are independent facts and I'm putting them together the way I'm putting them together, but I follow my chain of logic and try to find a problem with it. And I would, I would encourage people to do that because I like skepticism, but from slavery in the United States and North America in general, something like a trillion dollars was taken out of the black community mm -hmm. in America that has never been replaced. There's no way to replace it really. No. Uh, and that's about half of what their net worth should be as a community in America based on their relative, uh, our GDP and their relative size, right? The percentage of black people in America. So that's half of all the money that black Americans should have, they don't. Mm -hmm. Now, there's the, there have been these old stereotypes, and look, we know all about Jim Crow, we know all about uh, reconstruction failing and all this other stuff. Yep. Everything we've tried to do to right that wrong has not worked. Not and worked. ever since Jim Crow, the Democrats have been adamant about just keeping people on the tit. It's little handouts here, but no upward mobility, right? Mm -hmm. Like that didn't exist. <clears throat> so conservatives need to admit that this is a real thing. Yeah. And they also, here's the other fact. So that fact is undeniable. Trillion dollars, half of their net worth is gone. We also know from about 3,500 years now of uh, sociological data that crime, the number one indicator for crime is poverty. But yeah, I mean, like that's, I mean, if you're, if you're broke, yeah, you know, you, you do I, what you need to do and it becomes systemic. The next generation feels like it's part of your culture to do what you need to do. So they don't even entertain the idea of going back into society. They're like, well, fuck those. They fucked us over a long time. We can't yeah, trust those guys. Absolutely. We have to operate in our own economy over here yeah. and it damages them and it damages us. It's bad for that to happen. You have to admit as a conservative, that has happened. There's yeah. no question there's, about that. Uh, yeah, there's no Who denying. gives a fuck? Nobody's blaming you. Dakota Myers never owned slaves. Yeah, never. And neither have I, neither yeah, have any of you. I, I, and like we, we don't even know anyone. We've never no, met anyone. Who's literally never slaves. met anyone that's owned slaves. But this is a problem that exists. Now, are you or are you not a patriot? That is my question to you out there who want to fucking deny this stuff is happening. Absolutely. If you're a patriot and you're a good human being, you see a problem like that. And it's saying, instead of saying, I didn't, it's not me, I didn't do that, and wiping your hands and, and walking away, you fucking get in there and help people because that's yeah. what America is supposed to be about. We're it supposed is. to help people. And the idea that we've, uh, uh, because it's political or whatever the fuck is going on there, because it seems like it damages your reputation. Look, the left is just as... They're, they're as much to blame in that because they've tried to load, despite being completely complicit in slavery and Jim Crow and all this other stuff uh, from the get-go, they've tried to lay that at the feet of Republicans now as a political talking point. Like there's this trope that all conservatives are somehow racist, yeah. even the, the massive amounts of minority conservatives, which is kind of weird. But conservatives have to take the stand here because I think the left is out of its mind. Conservatives have to just like. But see, I think, I think, I think, they have, to, I think they, they have to fucking stop people and say, you know what, just shut up. It'll never happen. I, I honestly, I think, I think, yes, the left is completely out of their mind, mm. but I think it's because the conservative, like, I think the conservatives are doing it on purpose, right? Like, like, I think that the left's out of their mind because the conservatives are manipulating them and can get them out of their minds, right? It's nothing. It, the, the between Republicans and Democrats is nothing is nothing less than a a uh, toxic relationship. Right, it's yeah, no different sure. than, you can, than, you, than a toxic relationship. Yeah, right? you can tell by how they uh, flip positions, right? Absolutely. Like from the look so at the, John McCain. Let's look. Well, yeah. look at, let's look, John, but John, even before then, let's go back to the 19th century. Uh, the Monroe Doctrine. Republicans were notoriously anti-war yeah. for a very long time, and despite being somewhat hypocritical about it, because they were still the North American hegemon, they were controlling, <laughs> you know, sugar trades and all this other stuff that was going on in North and South Central America, but. They were staunchly against getting involved in any kind of foreign conflict. And the Democrats were not. They wanted to get involved in foreign conflicts for whatever reason. Yeah. Right? Um, <clears throat> now that's flipped, obviously, particularly in the 90s, uh, the late 90s. So Clinton tried to use half measures. He wanted to bomb places in Iraq to make up for, let's be real, George H.W. Bush not having the stones to go and wipe out Baghdad when he had a chance yeah. in the early 90s. That would have been a good time to do it. Two thousand three. Not, not that I think it would have done anything different, but Pro maybe back then. Nice. But I, definitely not in two thousand three. But probably not. But either way, um, 
I don't know it, the last time we went into a war. I don't know the last time we 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 fired munitions that it really really was going to change the history of America. I mean, Korea maybe. Maybe. Because maybe. Korea bifurcated then yep. and South Korea became a thing and that's good, but even then, I mean, we were still just fighting proxy wars to keep China and Russia from expanding at that point. Um, and that's the, like the, the containment strategy of the Cold War is a com abject failure. Yeah. All we did, like look at some of the results of it. We emboldened China and Russia and kept them going. Uh, <clears throat> we helped overthrow a democratically elected government in Iran and saw the fucking Ayatollah. Like, are you kidding me? What, what are, where are the good results out of the whole yeah. shit? Well, I mean, we don't finish anything. No. We go in and we do it with kick gloves and we don't finish anything. I mean, I think... I think, look, if, if we're going to go to war again, if we're going to send anybody off of off of our land to go do fighting, mm. um, I don't think we take news with us. I don't think we take anything. I think we go over there and we do it in a way that war is so ugly that they know, you know what, the next time if America leaves their soul, mm. they are coming in and they are going to they are going to destroy everything that's in front of them and they are going in to win at all cost. Yeah, I mean, that's a that sounds really good. I would like that. I don't I mean, I, th I don't think it's feasible because politicians are pussies and people are stupid well, that's what i'm saying right? is but if, if the politicians if it's not bad enough for us to go win mm. at all costs then it's not bad enough for us to leave the soul i mean what at what point does something constitute an unlawful order and at what level I mean, like for example if you were if the president of the united states says hey we need to go fight this country proposes it to congress and congress agrees and yeah. authorizes use of force for war uh but the generals the chiefs of staff are like no we're not gonna like at what point are these guys gonna stand up how what, I mean, what the look fuck? At, look, at, look at Stanley what McChrystal. The look at look, look at, at Stanley McChrystal. Look at Colin you know? Powell sitting in the UN, holding up a little vial full of powder, pretending like it's anth. Now he wasn't pretending; he was like this amount of anthrax can color everybody in the room. Yeah, that's true. They didn't have any of it. Clearly, the only anthrax that we interacted with were came from inside the United States, sent through letters through the Postal Service. So yeah. that whole fucking thing. He is a former Joint Chief. He's a general. All these Joint Chiefs that have allowed this shit to happen. You've got a fucking debt of yeah. lives on your fucking collar brother and it's it's uh if i if i yeah, were these people i would be deeply ashamed i would never i certainly wouldn't be out in public fucking writing letters about politics yeah, but and you shit have like to that. wall off i mean you have to wall off the generals from like why are generals in politics why, why are generals in politics i don't know well you know why 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 are they even i mean you know, it's just, it's, it's insane why our generals who are running this country, I mean, who, who are not running this country, but running our military. So you wonder why our military, think about this. You wonder why our military is getting so political and so mm -hmm. soft. Why? Why do you think that is? Because they want to have a career afterwards. Exactly. I mean, it's they pathetic. Wanna, I call it the star club, right? If they yeah. got stars on their chest, it means they sold their soul to somebody and they have forgot to care. Like they have, they have sold their soul. They are done caring about the troops. And they're going over and they're, yeah. they're, they're, it's all about their career and about how they're getting the next star and how they're going to get their next job after that. Probably. Like that star <clears throat> club is, 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 yeah. All I know is this. All these generals that have been advising X, Y, or Z that have never seen real combat in their lives, they've never, yeah. you know, they've never been shot at or blown up. They've never done any of this stuff. It's, it's Fortunate Son. It's Creed. It's Clear Out of Revival, right? All these guys haven't done shit. But for some reason, they felt it was okay to I, I feel like the generals in this country should have as much power as the elected branch with regard to deploying military forces generals should have an auto if the, the joint chiefs of staff should have an automatic veto if the president who gives a fuck what the president and congress say about yeah. whether or not we should deploy to a foreign country and fight a war there why are you they're taking not the advice? experts why are you taking yeah exactly right like like do you think what, what if a doctor had to come in had to come in and ask you know, you, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like, like, it's like ridiculous. Why are, this is not the expert. You, you are not, like, you're not the, like you, they should, the, the general should be coming to the president. Right. And but saying, they, hey. but they know, let, 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 to be fair to those guys, they know if they do that, they just get fired. And then somebody else comes in, that'll do the job. It's, it's the same way with Nixon yeah. firing people. So he can get somebody in there that'll do what he wants. Right. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. So I, I understand that part of it, but it would be political suicide for any governing body, whether it's the president, senator, the house, to fire all the generals. So maybe have a little conversation amongst yourselves, gentlemen, and decide right goddamn now that you're not going to let another American die for some bullshit because you've yeah. got the fucking power to do it and you haven't exercised that power. And what do we know about that? If you've got the power to stop bad shit from happening and you don't, then you're a fucking piece of shit. When's the last time you were in Iraq? Uh, 2008. 2008. So 2009, what they started doing was is they would like they would send us over there. So as troops in Iraq 
but you couldn't leave the wire pretty yeah. much, right? So right. we're sitting over there doing nothing, but making it look like we're doing shit. Right. And, and really, we're not doing anything. Well, you know why you're doing that? That's to justify the bills. Yeah, to these justify private companies the bills, right? are sending to the government. Yeah. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah, that's I mean, why Dick Cheney is the most evil human being that's ever existed in American politics. All he did was use his influence first as Secretary of Defense and as a congressman and then as Vice President of the United States to make money for his friends at the expense of American lives. And if you don't agree with that, I encourage you to go read history because we know now that he was lying about all this shit. We know that he had an agenda immediately upon coming into the White House. He started pushing the idea of invading Iraq before 9-11 even happened. Like he wanted in there. And he used 9-11, one of the most tragic events in American history, to justify sending hundreds of thousands of Americans and letting uh, thousands of them die just so he, he and his friends can make fucking money. That's yeah. all it is. So this brings us to our next, or actually our first topic. Technically, we've been rambling a bit. <clears throat> but the first topic is service. So again, we reached out to the community and asked for questions and such. Um, and a bunch of our listeners have actually asked us to weigh in on the subject of compulsory service, particularly overseas service, because it's something that we've talked about before, where uh, people should be required to serve their community in some way mm -hmm. and preferably serve in a community, whether it's here domestically or somewhere overseas, that is less fortunate than you are. Yeah. I think that's a really important lesson to learn. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I so I don't think that, you know, people have asked, do you think everyone should have to serve? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, not in the military. Not in the but military. There's plenty of ways to no serve. Means. There's plenty of ways to serve. But I mean, I don't think you can force someone, right? I mean, the only the only thing. Well, as a fucking infantryman, I don't want somebody next to me well, that doesn't want to be there. So that's my point, right? Fuck I think that. if you start forcing people to serve, I, but I think that like, I don't think that serving, and and this is this is my question to you is, I don't think that serving is, uh, it's nature. I think it's nurture. I think it's something that you see, and it's something. I don't think it's something you're born with. I don't think it's like in your DNA. I think that serving is is something that you see and you and it's a way of life that you right. see growing up, right? And so I, I think it's just something that we have to 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 get back to. I mean, I look at my kids and I always say that if you want to know how someone really is, if you want a true, true mirror mm. of who you are, <clears throat> look at your kids. Right. Look at your kids. If your kids are pieces of shit, it's probably because you're a piece of shit. Yeah. And um so, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I think people should serve. I mean, I'm all about serving. I mean, I'm, I'm all about serving my community. I, I feel like it is, it's ultimately how we will all be judged Yeah. Uh, when we go to whatever maker we go to, right? I mean, whatever you believe in. But I, I think that, that, that that's the truest piece of, of how you help out America. You know, I look back in the military and I always think about, you know, people talk about, you know, I just and you know the guys, but like, I just, I just want to go back over it. Cause I had purpose when I served in the military, right? right? Man, whether it didn't matter whether I was in Iraq or Afghanistan, it didn't matter whether I was going and handing out soccer balls that day mm -hmm. or whether I was patrolling down. I, I pulled over on the side of the road to help them fix a car. There's a lot of ways to make a difference or, 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 or whether I was taking a shot. All I was trying to do was make the world I was part of just a little bit better. Right. We can't do that here every day. I feel like that should people be, who care? I, I, I agree with you though. I think it should be your instinct, but it's not. And it's, there's it's, a, there's a variety of factors. Maybe it's not instinctual for people to reach out and help other people. Maybe, maybe no. tribal tribalism at your earliest stage shrinks. I mean, there's a lot you have to, you never have to teach a child to be selfish. You have to teach them to share typically, right? Like children are typically selfish particularly when they're from the 18 month to four year old yeah, part. Absolutely. That's, a, that's a problematic part for children. They have to learn social skills and all that stuff. This is, that's why my thoughts on this are that everyone should be required to serve your community. Now there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of different ways you could do that, but there's a, the reasons why you do it is more important to me. So, but don't you think you would take out, like if everybody served, you would take out the, the service part of it. Like if everybody maybe, was forced yeah. to serve, maybe, then, maybe. Then, then, but it, it then depends on why. Like you're, you're, serving. you're you're forced to do a lot of things that you don't want to do, right? Yeah, but I mean, this, that you can become good at. But serving is like it's like something you can take pride in, right? It's like it's like it's not equal for everyone, right? right. Like, hey, you know what? This is what I do for my community. It makes me for feel sure, good, yeah. right? Well, that's if why you it's, force everybody to do it. That's why it's important to start it super young. I mean, so it, it does become it, an instinct thing. So everything we go back to here is all about parenting. Yeah, it's, it really it's is. all about the yeah. home. Yeah. It's important for people to learn the meaning and importance of service at the youngest possible age, uh, because it is something that's difficult to teach, particularly when you start 
internalizing and realizing that you personally have problems, everybody else's problems seem muted compared to yours, even though yours are way less serious than most people's problems, particularly if you live in America. Um, second, having the experience of witnessing real poverty and understanding the effects of poverty, those experiences that I've had yeah. in those shithole places uh, have opened my eyes more than any individual fact I've ever come across. Seeing what real poverty looks like and then understanding uh, it's almost like, I, I hate to be hokey here, but it's almost like the first Christopher Nolan Batman movie where uh, Christian Bale's talking to a Liam Neeson and he's like, uh, what do you think about thievery or whatever? He goes, yeah, I used to have very base, uh, ignorant ideas about the nature of crime. And then when I was starving to death and had to steal food, so I didn't, everything changed in my brain. I think it's a really fucking important lesson for a lot of people that they never learn. I mean, they never had to do without, so they don't know what it means to do without, and they don't know what it means to go three generations doing without, and then you learned everything you know from your parents and grandparents, and they have been fucked over constantly this whole time, and now we're just asking them to forget about it and trust the system. No, we have to earn that trust back, and that's how it works. So it's amazing to me how many people bitch and moan about the conditions in the U.S. But, but they but, have no understanding but, of what it's really like in other places. But here's what I'm going to tell you is the people who are bitching and complaining, they, they don't have a clue. But here's what I, I, I'll say this. Go jump on a truck with me next week. You want to yeah. go see what poverty is? I promise you I'll show you places that were just like Iraq and Afghanistan here in America, mm. 20 minutes from here. Mm. Right. Just just as bad. The only thing yeah. I mean, just as bad. Just as bad people living in in houses with no electricity, no water. And it's actually worse. Oh, like, it's, it's you would terrible. Ex, you would expect to see that it's terrible. in Iraq. You would not expect to see that in the richest country in the history of the world. That's what I'm saying. Right? And we're when we allow that to happen, we're failing each other. You can only lead a horse to water. You cannot make them drink. However, yeah, however, these people wouldn't if you even break, know what water looked like. Yeah, if you fucking, uh, if, you, if you break the horse's legs and he can't kneel down or he's lying on the ground, he can't get his mouth to water, he still can't drink. I, here's my theory, or my, this is what I think we should do about this situation. And it's going to take time to institute it and, for, and to see the effects. But I think starting in elementary school, instead of having, like, you know, for requirements for graduation for high school, you have to have, like, I think four semesters of a foreign language, so two full years of a foreign language. Same thing for college. You got to have two full years of a foreign language. Yeah. X amount of math, X amount of English. I think starting in elementary school, you have to have X amount of community service every year to pass, not just from elementary to middle or junior high, but from each grade to the next grade. Every single year, you need to be involved in your community in some yeah. way, and that should be a grade that you get. You get so, a pass or fail on that. If you get a fail, you do not go to the next grade. Yeah, so so I always so I've always wanted to, to implement this system to where um, I was actually going to start a nonprofit on it, right? To where whenever kids had off school, mm. what they could do is they could come to this camp, really fun camp, mm. outdoors, teach them leadership, all those things. But when they when they came there, they had to take an oath, and they could start coming at the eighth grade. Right. They had to take an oath that they would go back and we would put together templates for systems that they could implement back in their school system. We would work with them and help them be leaders within their school system to be the person to help other people out. Right. To be the others to, to they'd have to go out and do charity work. Right. To raise money to fund the next person to come to the right. school. Right. And they would have to do all these things to understand what it's like to be able to bring someone there and to, to see what it's like to be able to help somebody else. Right. I mean, there's no better feeling I, personally. There's no better feeling in the world than being able to help someone else. I agree, yeah. I mean, Gandhi said uh, a nation's greatness is measured by how it treats its weakest members. Yep. And how you think we're doing in America we're not, right now? We're no, not, no, 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 no. Let's don't let's don't say America because there are there's a lot of Americans out there helping there helping are, yeah. America. But the, the how do you think the West, Republicans and Democrats are doing on that? I mean, right yeah, now? they don't pe they don't care. Politicians. Don't care. Don't give a shit. They do honest. not give a shit. I, I honestly believe they don't. And I, we've got friends that are politicians and, and I've got friends on both sides of the aisle that are major politicians in this country. And I still, I know the system they're in. I mean, it's, they're trying to ice skate uphill, even if you are a good yeah. person. It's, it's, it's uh, just broken it's from broken. the inside the out. The system's and, broken. And, and that's why I think that starting this stuff young, the most important thing you can do is something for somebody else whatever it is, uh, it's, it's the foundation of, of all of existence. Really. If you think about it, it's every, it's why tribalism exists. Every plant before us, every animal before us in the evolutionary chain, and then, uh, primates and then us have learned over time, several things. One, there's, there's a social hierarchy for sure. And it, and it depends on what the society needs at the time. And that stuff happens. But the other thing is 
we fail if we're not together. Yes. And it doesn't matter at this point, like back in the day, it was okay to only hang out with your group of people, whether it was Christians or Jews or Muslims or black people or white people or Americans or Europeans or Africans or, or whatever the fuck else. It was okay to do that back in the day. Now we are in a global system. When a global economy, people travel back and forth. Geopolitics is a fucking big thing right now. And there's a geo economy as well. And we cannot afford anymore to tolerate any more of this bullshit. We cannot afford to, to just say that we're better because we think we're better. Yep. You have to prove it every it's, single day. You have to earn and it. then you have to hold other people accountable. You have to earn it. Like you have to earn the right to say yes. you're the best. Yes. And then you have to, then you, once you earn the best title, you have a responsibility to take that best to everybody else. And I'm not saying nation building. Nope. What I'm saying is we have tremendous economic power in, in America. If we stop buying, China shuts down, right? Yep. We have, I think we have like a fucking 70 billion trade deficit with I them. Mean, we control all the seas. As much, China, as much as China spends in America on real estate and all the other stuff that you guys are worried about, we spend almost $100 billion more per year on shit from their country. So their entire economy collapses without us. That is tremendous power. OPEC collapses. If America just starts tapping its own oil reserves, OPEC collapses. And all those countries, most of the fucking wars we fought over the last however many years are because we can't afford uh, unstable Arab governments in yeah. OPEC because it makes our gas too high and it fucks with our economy. We're fighting wars over that. Yep. You know what we could do is produce our own energy and tell those people to get fucked until you start letting you know women drive or stop throwing gay people off buildings for being yeah. gay, things like well, that. I mean, look, it's priorities. It goes yeah, back it to priorities. It goes back to America's well, people priorities. Wanna, the politicians want to say, they want to use that big picture excuse. Fuck the big picture. Yeah. Dude, you can't aim small, miss small, motherfucker. That's right. It is one of the best phrases in the history of physics or humanity. The, the smaller your target is, the more impact you're going to have. Yep. And the less likely you're going to miss egregiously on that target. You're, you're, everything you do in life should be in some way to either promote conscious joy or mitigate conscious suffering in some way. And if you're not living your life like that, I challenge you to, to think about every decision you make. I'm not saying going Just to the bathroom. Just be conscious of your decisions. Yeah, I'm not saying go to the bathroom, but think before you make a major decision or say something out loud in public, particularly if you're a person of influence, Think what the ramifications of what you just said. And you stop. Gave. If you look, if you just if you just stop saying and doing shit to hurt others, and you say, "Hey, how how is this going to help me? How is this going to help me or help somebody else?" Like if you just change the mindset, we're too busy trying to hurt each other. We're too too busy trying mm. to say shit to 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 hurt everyone else, or right. like, "Hey, watch this. I'm gonna I'm gonna expose this person, or I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna show this, or watch this. I'm gonna because hurt this person." It's not about like, making things better it's about making a point and making a scene that's yeah it. for a moment you're a flash yeah. in the fucking pan but look at man look at nelson mandela if anybody on earth had a right to be angry and vengeful that man did yep and you know what he did he said you know what i do feel that way but if i act that way then our country is going to fail absolutely and he went out of his way to quell any kind of retribution against white people even though he had every right to fucking be pissed and as soon as he was gone and his influence was gone now you see what's happening these, these new leaders in South Africa are tearing into white farmers and stuff like that. Fucking people. There's all kind of violence over there and it's eventually going to crash their economy. Yep. It's going to happen and he knew it would happen and that's why he didn't do it. You have to be bigger than that. You bigger. have to be better. Yeah, you, we, well, we, you, you have to put others before yourself. Don't tell, if you're, it doesn't help to say you're on the Yankees if you've got a fucking 091 batting average. No one gives a fuck <laughs> at that point. Yeah. So don't tell me I'm, I'm America. I'm from America. I'm a patriot unless you're fucking doing something to deserve the blood that this thing cost, yeah. period. I listen, I, I say I, I say the same thing to veterans all the time, right? Yeah. Don't walk Your around and be a piece over, of bitch. shit. Don't walk around and be a piece of shit and say you're a veteran. Yeah. Like you can be a piece of shit if you want, but just leave the word veteran yeah. out of it. Um, all right, well, we are at that time. The ghost bed time. The ghostbeds.com. Is, is that good? Is that good? Is that, am I as good as Ross? Um, he's got a very rich timber yeah, to his I, voice. I can't do it. I, I was going to start coughing if I did it. Yeah. You almost choked out. Uh, I did almost choke out. Um, <coughs> oh, there it was like, uh, like but, Khabib choked out Justin Gaethje ooh, yesterday. Um, yeah, Khabib did do good. 
He is the um, best fighter of all he's time. He's the best by far. All right, anyways, back. Ghost Beds. Uh, so they've been a loyal sponsor, Drinker Bros, over the past four years. Everyone loves them. Uh, I don't know another bed that has a 20-year warranty on each mattress. Have you ever even kept a bed for 20 years, uh, uh, Dan? No, I don't think uh, a bed of mine would last that long, yeah. to be honest. Uh, yeah. And made in the United States of America. You can try it out. You can literally try it out for 101 nights. Um, if you're not satisfied, you can send it back. Uh, the thing that's badass about ghost beds is that they support the people who are out there putting it on the line every day. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they're definitely so patriotic. Uh, but right a, now, there, there are a lot of companies that do veteran discounts. There's yeah. fewer that do like first responder discounts. I don't know any companies that do. They, basically, what they did was anybody that got any major profession that got deemed essential when the shutdown started, they expanded their military yep. veteran and first responder discount to everybody, nurses, teachers, government employees, anybody that had to be on the job, uh, they ex- ex- extended to them. And look, you never think about buying a bed. Like no. people don't think about that. And because it's a big ticket item, it's like anywhere from what, fucking five to 1500 bucks probably for a, a decent bed. People don't think about that shit until it's time, you need one. And it's those little luxury, it's one third of your life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you're sleeping eight hours a day, which none of us are, but if you were to sleep eight hours a day, that's one third of your life. You want to be not only on a quality product, but you want to you want to vote with your dollar. You want to yeah, vote. You want to sure. vote for the kind of company that takes care of the people that take care of you. Yep. And that's why we've worked for Ghostbed for four years now. They're badass. We'll never leave them. Uh, and they're giving thirty percent off for, uh, yep. for on everything for military first responders, government teachers, twenty five percent off on mattresses plus two free pillows, and they have this badass cooling technology. Mm. Um, the Ghostbed Lux, yeah. The Ghostbed Lux does. Um, you can. So, and the other cool part is, is that they have financing, zero percent down, zero percent financing, or zero dollars down, zero percent financing. You can buy a mattress for like thirty-five bucks a month. Um, go check them out, Ghostbed.com forward slash Drinking Bros, um, and tell them we sent you. Tell them, tell them the American Party Podcast sent you. Man, you know. Um, I gotta say, like the show's been doing, the show's been doing amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, one thing that you guys can do, let's keep it, get the numbers up to, you know, when you're coming to listen to this, if you'll get on iTunes and leave us a review, um, you know, go on there and rate us, leave us a review. That's the stuff that that keeps us up in the top of the charts, right? I mean, me and Dan, um, we actually sat down and, and and came up with this idea for the American Party podcast, uh, just because we kind of got tired, like we would just call each other randomly throughout the week and just talk about shit that was going on and like how does anybody agree with this if they really Mm. thought about it right if it wasn't just a a, the news trying to 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 paint this thing the way that they want to it's 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 like smoke and mirrors with the news right and we were like how can we how can we make this um how can we make this real so uh we did this and you know look go go on so if you if you get time go on itunes you're listening to this go on there and uh give us a review uh, tell us what you think. Also, you know, whether you're on uh, Instagram or whether you're looking at us on YouTube, go on there and leave us questions. If you got questions, we we want to answer them. So so put put your questions on there. Like there no dumb questions. Shoot us a DM on the American Party Podcast on Instagram and and look. That's this is what we're here to do, right? What do you think, Dan? Yeah, the uh, the reviews really help. There's some there's some uh, algorithm that has to do with ratings, reviews, the number of them, the quality of them, and then the total number of downloads you do versus the amount of shows you published it, how they decide their ranking. So yeah, it definitely helps yeah. when people uh, give us those reviews. Plus, people usually write, at least for Drinking Bros, people write really funny reviews. I yeah. doubt the reviews for this will be that funny because it's more of a serious show, but even then, it tells people what to expect when they come listening to this because let's let's be real, there's a perception out there two white military veterans, right, that live yeah. in Texas are going to yeah. per- be perceived in a very specific way. I am not and never have been and never will be a Republican or a Democrat. Yep. I don't care about e- any of that bullshit. But people, you know, people say don't judge a book by its cover. Well, the cover of the book exists for a reason, Yeah. right? I can't change the way I look, but we can change the way our public perception is by you guys writing the kind of reviews that reflect what this show really is. So we appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, and and, and to go back to that, I mean, I think that we have got to, um, 
stop putting each other in these cookie cutters, right? Mm-hmm. Like, let's start judging people individually. Like, do you, and I think the pe- the reason that people want to go with, you know, well, white males are terrible or right. you, all these other things that's going on. I think what they're doing is, is, is people have stopped basing, like stop looking inward and thinking of what their own principles, like, like when I look at you and say, well, you're a white male, so you must be conservative because you right. have a beard and this and that. Yeah. All that's saying is, is that, you know what? You were too um, lazy to talk to me. I, I, well, not just that. I think it goes deeper. I think that it means that that I haven't even came up with what I believe in. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go ahead and judge the way I think you believe instead of instead of having something. Because if I stand for something, then that means I have to fall for that, right? You like, have to defend like it. I have yeah. to believe in it and I have to defend it. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack you. So you have to defend your beliefs so I don't have to. Cause I don't uh, have yeah, any. I mean, it's it's in a debate. It's called what aboutism, right? What so about-ism? somebody says, for example, you everybody's making a big deal of uh, Pete Buttigieg on Fox News and how great he's doing with all this stuff. I watched all of his segments uh, yesterday afternoon, actually, and he's a fucking imbecile. This guy, he, it's it's like, uh, what do you have to say about Biden doing X, Y, and Z? And he goes, well, Trump's doing this. Like that's not the fucking question, asshole. Yeah. Get your fucking politics out of the way and answer the question about your candidate who's running for office. That's that was the question. Yeah. You're 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 here to try out for. This is a tryout. This is an interview, interview to become the president of the United States. And you're one of the references for this man. He listed you as a reference because he sent you out to campaign for him. And you came in and talked about how bad the other guy was and didn't say a goddamn word about what Joe Biden does. Yeah. That is a fucking problem. For these people and and it's not it's clearly it's not just the left everybody yeah, in politics does this stuff but it's what about is well what about this well, what, what about, about this what about, what about the this? fucking question i just asked you how yeah. about you answer that first yeah, the court packing thing they won't respond to you they just won't respond to it i don't know why they're making so much more of a fucking story out of this than it should be crazy because uh honestly when it first came up republicans were like well what if what if they add more senators or what if they try to add more seats to the supreme court my first response to that was like, get the fuck out of here. I mean, nobody's going to do that. And the fact that they won't answer. And then the fact that Pelosi said, we'll do what we need to do, or we'll see what happens. And Biden said, basically, we'll see what we have and what, what happens as well. Tells me that that's on the table for them. And that if, if changing the rules to the game because you're losing is on the table. Isn't that, then isn't that crazy? That, it, like, isn't that, <laughs> I mean, just like, but, it, but you, but you've seen this coming because you've seen this coming because they, I mean, look, well, the electoral votes, we won the majority of people, but, you know, he won the electoral votes. Like you see, you knew this was coming, right? Mm -hmm. The, 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 the scary part that I believe the, that here's the difference, but here's the only scary part that I think is, is truly, um, the part that concerns me with this election is, is I think if, if, if the Republicans get elected, Mm -hmm. I don't think the rules change. I think if the Democrats get elected, they try to change the rules to set themselves up better for next time. Right. And l- let's be real clear about this. The Republicans are just as obstructionist as anybody else. hundred percent. They voted, I think, 46 times to defund Obamacare. I, I, they never had the votes to do I'm it. I'm talking about the they election were, process. No, I know. So let me, let me finish with that thought. So they had a big thing that was on the table and McConnell hinted at it a few times, but never followed through because he, he didn't want the consequences of what that would be is to invoke the nuclear option in the Senate, which means up down votes, no cloture voting. So this whole deal where some, in some cases you need 60 votes to get something done, they would do away with that. And a simple majority would always win from then on. And that is, uh, you know, maybe that's fair. I don't know, but it's not the way things work. The rules of the game right now require cloture votes on a lot of this stuff. And they wanted to, the Republicans did express interest in changing it, but they didn't because, and from what I understand from people who are, operatives on the conservative side it was like mutually assured destruction with russia back in the day we didn't want to fire our nukes because we knew they would fire their nukes if you start escalating like that if you even threat or hint at escalating people are going to take dramatic measures to make sure that doesn't happen but let me ask you this but let me ask you this why would the people elected by the american people why did they get to change the rules the american people if 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 there's going to be a vote on how any of the rules that they have mm-hmm. to play by or changed. It's a nationwide election. It's not a vote between the people who are in office. Right. Yeah. It's I mean, not the people who are going to benefit from it. Like, like that's the problem with all this is like, I, like, 
it's not about Republicans or Democrats. Like, you know, if you want to change the voting process of why don't the American people get to vote on that? J- just like with term and we limits. We do. We do ballot measures just in like most with, states, right? Just like term, lim- term limits. Let me ask you this. What do you think? What do you think would happen if the American people got to vote for term, lim- term limits for, their, for, for the people who are elected in charge? Well, they would absolutely do that, yeah. The American people would say the yes. The American people will absolutely do so that. How, so how does it make sense that we have a system to where the people who are that we don't trust right now, mm-hmm. the people who are messing this up, the people who, 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 I mean, how do they get to decide what the rules that they get to play by when we're the people that we, like, they're elected for us? Yeah, you know, the, uh, the framers, <sighs> man, do you, do you see my point? Yeah, the the Bill of Rights was published um, or ratified rather December 15th, 1791, right? Pretty early on. We knew pretty early on. We ran with the Constitution at first, started developing new common and case law and and uh, and uh, and other uh, types of laws and stuff like that. And then we realized pretty quick and they were, they were working on it before this, obviously, within the first two years of this country's technical existence with a president to come up with a bill of rights. And it was going to be the, it was, they, they thought about, I'm sure the Magna Carta, right? Giving property rights to people for the first time in a real way and a piece of paper signed by a government official, you know, in that case, a King. Um, I'm sure they were channeling that in some ways. The last one that they wrote was the 10th amendment. And the 10th amendment says the powers not delegated to the United States by the constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. Now, where in that says that there should be any amendment after the 10th? To me, that shuts the whole thing down. And it's a curious thing that we didn't. Now, in some cases, it's good we didn't. Like the 13th and 14th Amendments are great. I want people to be able to vote. I don't care if they're what color they are, if they own property. 17th Amendment's important. Uh, a lot of them are. Prohibition, the 19th, not so much. 21st, undoing prohibition, I guess, probably shouldn't have been necessary either because the first one shouldn't have existed. So we have these governing bodies that are not the people. They're yeah. not even the states. They're not the They're people. federal representatives of states. Yep. They're federal employees that are representatives of states are making decisions. As long as 67 of them can agree, you can change the rules of the game. And without any say-so from the people in that election. So let me ask right? you this. So I, heard- I, think, I think for a constitutional amendment to get passed, it should have, have to, to it, it. it should have to come up before the election and everybody in Senate should have to run for re-election with their position open on what they want to do with regard to that. Done. That's an easy way to handle that without having to have a nationwide I mean, vote. I mean, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. How do we, so me and you are going to run for president in 2024, uh, president, vice president. Uh, we're going to be on the ticket. We're already announcing it. Uh, we haven't decided who's going to be what, um, but we'll get there. We may not tell anybody. We might, we might not. We may not. We may just go on the campaign trail together. So my point to you is, is how... Maybe we need to research this. I'm 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 dumb when it comes to these things, um, but how would we go about? We become president, vice president, and we want to go ahead and start bringing the votes to the people and empowering the people, not Congress anymore. Well, I mean, the first step is to uh, do what I've said before, which What's is that? to make like. First off, I want to know: Do you think my idea is dumb? No, I don't. I, and it's, it reflects one of the ideas that I think I mentioned on the last two shows, actually, which is that taxes should be paid at the lowest possible level, whether it's your city, then your county, then your state, then the federal government, right? And that makes sure that your voting power with regard to how much money you're spending, uh, or not how much money you're spending, but your voting power based on you paying taxes is having the lowest possible low, which means you have the greatest possible impact as an individual yeah. to make sure your life is, because that's what we want. We want the most people opining so we get the best answer for the best people. Yeah. That's how that works. That's the way democracy works. Absolutely. Uh, so that's what we want. Uh, I think you you shift that from the tax thing onto the voting thing. What issues need to be federal versus yeah. you know state or, or even lower? So we, we need to reimagine the way our government works entirely. Yeah, absolutely. because it's it's gotten completely out of control. Um, and one one of the biggest ways that you can see this is in education, right? If I, I don't understand these people who want, it's so bizarre to me. All these um, these municipal unions and teachers unions, especially, 
that are super supportive of the Affordable Care Act. Now, I understand the idea. I think that we should make sure that every human being in this country has health care, good health care. Every human being in America. Yeah. I'm not saying the government not should run it. Yeah. I'm not sure, saying it should be a public option. And I'm damn sure not on board with health insurance because I think that's a fucking scam. Yeah. I think everybody should get that. I don't understand why people who see how inefficient the government is because they work in government basically as yeah. an educator would want the government handling this. So, like that doesn't make any sense to no, me. So, so here's what I think is, you know, so, so the way we fix healthcare mm. is we come in and we, we hold the, we hold the hospitals, we hold everybody accountable, right? I think healthcare in America efficient. should be a nonprofit. Uh, no, no, no. I think it's for profit because I think that that increases competition. And so therefore you're going to get the best shit you're going to get, right? You can still make money in a nonprofit. But here's what I have to believe is, is that if we hold them accountable, we, we hold a line of, Hey, you can't go in and, and charge, you know, $50 for an aspirin. Right. Right. Like we hold them accountable, put the, put the limits on what they're doing. I would take the chance that even if all the, the, the big pharma stood back and said, well, we just won't produce it anymore. Right. Right. I would take the chance that there would be good people. I would take the, I would play, make my bet mm -hmm. on the United States of America and the good people within America that somebody would stand up and say, you know what? I'll do it for that. What do you yeah. think? I mean, I think that's... Um, and, and, and how much mm. does that fix for us? Like how much... Just start there. We're talking about starting with si like simplifying these problems. Yeah. And I mean, what do you think? I think it's... Uh, what do you think? I mean, there's there are ways that you could deal with them refusing oh. to make stuff though. For example... That's fine. You could enact the uh, Defense Production Act and then they don't have a choice. Like if it becomes... I don't think you'd have to do if it. If you declare... I don't think you would either, I, but I, even I'm, even then there would be safe uh, harbor for something like that. You would, you would immediately, as soon as it become became a national emergency and a, a drug shortages and vaccine shortages are automatically considered national yeah. emergencies. You could invoke the defense production act anytime you wanted. But, and, but don't you think that that's the, like, though, this is where, like, when I see, you know, the Republicans and Democrats talking about the shit that they're talking yeah. about, I'm like, you are so far removed mm -hmm. from the issues that need to be handled right now. Right. But, but the thing is, is here's the deal. You're never going to get the Republicans or Democrats to turn around and focus and say this because guess what? How, how, how many of, how much of their donation is coming from big pharma? Yeah, how bunch. many connections do they have down through there? Right. I mean, a you bunch. got people in there who are connected to this. I've got a, I, this is an honest question. I would love to hear answers from you guys out in the audience. And I want to hear your answer as well about this. What, what is more in your mind, patriotic, uh, overpaying for an American product. And when I say overpaying, I mean being price gouged in such a way that 83%, I say this a lot, 83% of all private, privately filed bankruptcies in this country are because of unpaid medical expenses, usually ER visits or some kind of major surgery. Yep. The vast majority mm -hmm. are because of that. What's more patriotic, uh, dealing with a, a American company like Johnson & Johnson and tell them to get fucked yep. and then going out to the international market and buying cheaper drugs for our people that are the same goddamn thing. Yep. Or allowing this guy, I, I, like I'm, I got it, dude. I'm not anti-billionaire. I yeah. want people to get rich. No, no, yeah, no, no. Fucking I'm, do yeah. your thing, man. Because if you come up with a great idea, you fucking. But deserve you it. can't get rich off of hurting other people. Yeah, you cannot. We can't allow it. No. I don't care what. I don't. There, there's. You, you can't, can't. You get can't get rich yell, off other people's bankruptcies. Yeah. Every single fucking. Uh, I mean, it's it's like a fucking the mafia. Yeah. Like with all the HUD stuff they used to do back in the day, <laughs> yeah. they would go in and find these uh, homes and like fucking like project areas or or uh, run down areas and they would buy them up for pennies on the dollar. HUD would fucking pay them a fee to ref oh, to fix them all up. They would take the fee, sure. never fix them up. They would go into default on the loans. The LLCs that they set up are fake, so they never fucking got, the, the mob just took that money. And that's what you're seeing now. People, this transfer of wealth that's happened over the last 25 years, either through medical expenses or through the housing market collapses with all these fucking weird ass, the too big to fail bullshit, yep. the transfer of wealth from normal people to rich people, that's a problem. I don't care if Jeff Bezos gets rich selling shit on Amazon. No. Because that makes my life easier, to and, be honest. And, and Let's nobody's be real. going bankrupt. So, so like no. if you're bankrupt because you bought too much shit on Amazon, that's your fault. That's yeah. you're an idiot. For sure, yeah. If you're bankrupt and you literally lose everything you have because you had a medical issue, yeah. that's not your problem. Yeah. That's, 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 that's a that's a failure. That, that is a failure part, yeah. of the United States of America yeah. and us and the leadership. So, so again, I, let me let's get back to my question. I want you to answer it. What's more patriotic, uh, propping up 
a billionaire who's taking advantage of people who happens to be in America running an American company are going to Germany and paying less money for drugs, even though that's a different country and putting more money into their economy. Yeah, Germany. I mean, what it, it, it begs the question, where are your priorities? Is yeah. it in wealth or is it in yeah. people's No, health? because I because I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now that as soon as we put a limit as soon as we made a fair limit on mm-hmm. these on, on these types of, of, of things, you know, medical medical devices, medical you know, um, medicine, all that shit, yeah, yeah. right? As soon as we put a fair a fair standard on that, mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you right now, somebody I, I I have no doubt that somebody in the United States of America would stand up and say, you know what, I, I I'll do it for that. Yeah, it's a fair way to do. It. I, we I have good say, people here. I would say it acts in the reverse, almost of a minimum wage. And I think minimum wage laws in this country are severely broken right now because they're trying to apply. Look, states that have handled it on their own have done pretty well with it in a lot of cases. But individual uh, politicians that want to make like a nationwide, like, come on, man, it just doesn't work. That Things cost differently in different places. And in the same way, uh, you can set a minimum standard like our maximum standard. You can make a 20% profit on this. That's a good profit in a yep. business. If you're after your expenses, you're still making 20%. That's great. And then everybody in the market knows you can't charge more than this for this drug or product, yep. but you can charge less. Mm-hmm. If you want to be competitive and you want to produce at a higher level, there's still plenty of free market left for you to operate in where you're not gouging people and taking advantage of people. That is the role of the federal government sure. when it comes to our economy. Their role should be See, to make sure we're not getting fucked over. Which is also known and also called protecting the people. Yeah. Well, that's not a popular thing anymore. So, Let's leave. I'm going to go back into this uh, education thing. One of our users asked us uh, why he should have to pay taxes for schools when he doesn't have children. Yeah. And uh, I'm fine with that question because it's on the right track. Uh, anytime the government asks us for money, we should be allowed to ask why, what for, and what am I getting in return? And by what, by I in that sentence, I mean the people. What are we, the people, getting in return for that amount of money that we're giving you? Uh, this is an easy one for me. Uh, And that's because education is infrastructure, right? It's like roads. It's like anything else. Uh, We have to have that. It's an investment into the quality of life for all Americans because we need an educated populace, one, to make good decisions, to elect the right people, uh, to find cures for diseases, to develop new technology, to keep us ahead of the game uh, in geopolitics and economics and, and, uh, and, and all these other things. Again, I like the question in principle because I think, uh, I, th- I think ch- challenging this stuff is good, but education has to be considered mm-hmm. infrastructure. And I think medicine, honestly, should also be considered infrastructure. For sure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I, I totally uh, agree with you. I mean, look, yeah, you, you got to ask, well, why am I paying school tax? Mm-hmm. You know, whenever I, my kids don't go to school in this district, right? But at some point, should you have kids? And if nothing else, even if you never are going to have kids, you're investing in the people of your county right. or city or whatever the, whatever that piece is, right? I mean, the doctors that you go see, they could have went through that education system that you're at, right? Don't yeah. you want the best doctors? Don't you want, you know, so I, I, that that is a, um, yeah, I mean, a questioning why you would have to pay, I, I think it's a great question, mm-hmm. right? But I think like if you question, I think that's like equivalent to you questioning, well, why do I pay uh, why do all this, why does all this tax money go into roads that I don't drive on? Right. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, well, yeah. even if you're not yeah. driving, the people yeah. delivering stuff yeah. to you, <laughs> you know I mean? your business or whatever are still driving on those roads. I mean, there's always uh trickle down effects for lack of a better phrase, secondary and tertiary effects, uh, for sure. second and third order effects. A better question I think is, uh, should the government be involved in the education business at all? No. And I don't understand why they would be. The involvement yeah. began with the establishment in uh, 1867 of the Office of Education. And their role was simply to collect information on all schools nationwide and the teaching that they were doing there, the curriculum, the types of teaching they were doing, the class sizes, just data in general, to, pro- to send that information back to the schools, right, mm-hmm. to the states so they could run their schools in a way that was good. That, yeah. is, that should be the government's only role. Yeah, in I mean, education. Why the fuck would we let the federal government set well, the rules for how and what we teach our children? Well, because well, I'll tell you. Uh, because so, do I think it's right? No. So mm. let me start that up. I, I absolutely not. But I'll, I'll tell you what the idea of this: the federal government is nothing more than the state's insurance plan. Mm. It's nothing more than the state's bank. 
right? And it's, it's or the state's credit card, should I say? Yeah. Um, the, the federal government has came in and is trying to make up for where states have shitty leadership, right? Shit, states that can't make it work, they're coming in and 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 you know it's giving them opportunities. It's like it's like the ultimate mob, right? Right. The federal government is like the ultimate mob of being able to come into states that aren't strong and being able to, hey, let me hand you a little bit of money. And right. when you take this, because I know you need this money. So when you take this money, now you just signed, you just signed the, the deed to your house right. to me. Right. And now I own you. And that's what the federal government's done is they have, you know, came in and they've taken over so much of our nation. Mm which is not what it's meant to be. No, certainly I, not. I, I mean, I totally agree. I think that, that the government's only role, the only role should be is, is, is two things is national defense. It should yep. be globally. The, the federal government should be worrying about us globally right. and how we stand there. Right. And then the second thing it should be is it should literally be the hammer, the hammer for when a state needs it. Right. Yeah. So like, but the people, I mean, we vote, see the infrastructure for that already exists. Like, uh, it does. The National Guard can't be activated at the federal level without express mm -hmm. consent, actually by request of the governor of that yes. state, right? To go from between 32 and 10, titles 32 and 10, you have to, the, the governor has to declare a state of emergency and then request federal assistance, yep. right? That is exactly how it should be for any of this stuff. Yes. People in that state have the, the ability to vote a governor out a lot easier Right. The people of Texas can vote out Abbott a lot easier than they can vote in Donald Trump yeah, or vote so, out Donald Trump or any of that stuff. And, and like, let me ask you this. If you're going to let the federal government, if you're going to keep paying all this money to the federal mm -hmm. government and you're going to let the federal government decide your whole state, then why don't we get rid of states and just become all one big state? Yeah. I mean, what's the point? At what's this the point? point? Like the, fr the, point? the framers were really smart about this. It's again, why the 10th Amendment exists. People were, we did not want another kingdom. Yes. And we did guess not what want we're, that. Guess what we're getting? Well, we have an oligarchy now, basically. But, uh, you know, we certainly didn't want another kingdom. The government's role in anything other than national defense should simply be to advise and assist. And, and why? And, you're, the, you're the fucking fire extinguisher. You're the, uh, the hatchet behind the glass that says break uh, if needed or whatever the fuck. Break in case of emergency. Collect information and provide it to the states so they can utilize it. Provide them assistance as they need it. No politics, no parties, no bullshit. I think the president of the United States being a partisan position is about the dumbest goddamn thing of all time. Like people ask a lot, why would the, because in North Carolina, when Ross and I were talking about running for school board there, that's a partisan position. Like you have to register as a Democrat, Republican, or independent. And if you register as an independent, you have to go out and get your own three or 4,000 votes to get even get on the ballot in the first place. If you're not part of one of the two political parties, why would we pigeonhole our, our, our most powerful leader into choosing between a list of things on one side or the other. That's why people, that's why Trump upsets so many people because he doesn't care. Yeah. He doesn't care about any of that. He doesn't. He doesn't because he, he, well, because he's not, he's not being ran by any of them. No. And if he wins this time, bulls are on parade. Oh, it's on. I mean, he's going to do whatever the fuck he wants for the next four years. Yeah. Which, I mean, you know, good or bad, we'll see, but that's definitely what's going to happen. And speaking of it being on, man, you know how to get it on. I do, yeah. Thanks for uh, the compliment. Yeah. I should put that on my LinkedIn page. You should. He knows how to get it on, uh, Dakota Meyer. Yeah. Medal of Honor recipient. He knows how to get it on. Um, but if you need help getting it on, why don't you tell us what you can get help with getting it on with, Dan? Uh, well, I mean, I get my help from uh, Roman ED. Yeah. Right? Roman. I mean, it's a good supplement. If you're out there, if, you're, if you're a guy that has... Uh, I know it's a lot in the military because a lot of the ED problems come from issues in the PTSD. endocrine and PTSD in the endocrine system. Yep. And um, if you've if you've gotten your head banged around a lot or anything like that, you're gonna have issues with that. I, I I tell people all the time, go get your testosterone levels checked. If you're feeling shitty, if you're a dude especially and you're out there and you've had your head banged around, you've been even if you haven't been directly in an explosion, a one five five round going off within one mile of you can cause a concussive wave that will give you traumatic brain injury at some level, even yeah. if it's mild. And how many times has that happened to you? Or just playing football growing up yeah, or, or fighting. Or, or dinging or... your head on the side of your car door when you're yeah. getting into it, any of that stuff. Um, it's Nobody wants to go to a doctor and deal with this shit. And if you're one of our fans, you're probably at least in some way associated with the VA. You definitely don't want to be going in there yeah. and dealing with this. Roman is all telemedicine, right? You can do uh, video conferencing or you can just go in the chat, you answer some questions and they diagnose you based on different kind of stuff. Uh, and you have a real 
meeting with a real doctor. You know what I mean? No waiting in line, none of that bullshit. They have a real meeting with a real doctor, and then they will prescribe you medicine as needed. Absolutely. That's how it should work. I That's mean, they, they just took, it's like the, the Amazon of medicine Yeah. at this point. Like, why? T- tell me this. If you need something two days from now, what are the chances you're going to go to a store and get it? Yeah, not happening. Zero percent in 2020, right? Yeah. You're definitely ordering that on Amazon. So, For sure. You know, with Roman, you get a free online evaluation and ongoing care. Uh, so you can talk to these people whenever you want. Yeah. It's not like uh, <laughs> if you ever work with attorneys, it's not like every time you text them, they're going to charge you for six minutes or 15 yeah. minutes or whatever. You can talk to these people whenever you need to. They'll respond. Um, healthcare professional works with you to find the best treatment plan. And if they do prescribe your medication, it'll be there within two days. Yeah, I- and it's 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 it comes in a discreet package. Nobody can tell what it is. So all this... All these reasons so over you, the years that, that we've used, like men are notoriously dumb about being embarrassed about medical shit and going to the doctor. We'll just let our leg rot off because yeah. we don't want to deal with yeah. it or whatever. It's so stupid. They're taking most of that out of out of play for you, so there's no excuse not to do this. Yeah, this I mean, point. look. And um, yeah, so you want to be able to get it on. Yeah, Call you Roman. want an American boner. Yeah, you want an American boner. So uh, wh- where do we get it at? You go to getroman.com slash American, obviously. Yeah. And uh, So yet that is the, yeah. that's the only way to get an American yeah. boner. You complete your visits. Uh, yep. You know, just go to roman.com slash American. You get up to $50 off your first month. And then a, a free online visit and free day, two-day shipping. Badass. Uh, it's getroman.com slash American for uh, $50 off your first month. Get Roman dot com slash american can you spell all those words you can do that get roman dot com forward slash american there you go well you said them but didn't spell them but i didn't really oh, i didn't bad. really want you to spell the whole thing out that could have gotten awkward my my bad so what i mean what can we what, what can we do dan what can we do well i mean i think that we got another hold on a sec we got another good question here let me see i'm trying to see who actually asked it uh, I need to write this down. By the way, for those of you out there in the audience, we're going to start, um, we're going to get some coins made yeah. and, uh, stickers and things like that. And for every question you submit where you, yeah, we use it on the show. We're going to start sending you a little thing. Um, we're, we're going to come, we need to come up with like a group name. I don't know if we just put American party on it or some kind of, uh, what do you call it? Um, what? something now, like some kind of, some kind of some some way to refer you, to the audience. What do you want it at? Oh, the American party. I know, but like, what do we call, what, what would you call somebody who was a part of the American party? That's what we need to find out. It's okay. it's a title. Title. And it'll be like, what do you guys think? Like a drinking bro. Let's basically. do a, uh, we'll, we'll do a video after this and we'll put it up on Instagram. Yep. And we'll, uh, uh, what, what, what do we want to be called? Yeah, we'll figure, we'll, we'll get, we'll crowdsource it because, you know, more minds are better than yes, just the than two just of ours. ours and especially yeah. your, yours is filled with crayons and yeah. And smoke at this point. Somebody asked us, uh, what's a good way to get younger people involved in politics in a real way? Not just not just campaigning, not just voting, but becoming part of the political process. Like if we if we truly and this is the reason why it seems I, I guess it could possibly seem like we're just here flippantly talking shit right now, right? But unless you and I at some point are willing to step out of our comfort zone and get involved in politics, maybe as candidates, maybe not, definitely as influence, as, as some kind of influential person. Dan, I'm telling you right now. I'm just saying, if, unless you get up off your ass at some point and do the thing you're talking about, then all you've done is say words, Yeah. right? Like, yeah, we can affect a lot of people, we can help change the way people think, and that's important, but you have to lead by example. So I agree with this question, I think it's a really important one. And the first thing that I would say about it is that we have for every single office in this country, we have an age requirement. You have to be 25 or older to be a congressman. You have to be, uh, what, 28 to be a senator, I think, or yeah, 29. 20 or 29. And you have to be 35 to be president. I, might, might be 30 to be senator. I think it's 29, but I don't remember. But anyways, <clears throat> if there's an age requirement, why isn't there an age limit? I mean, look. Like, do you want septuagenarians and octogenarians I'm running you. your government, making decisions for you? I don't, I don't think I do. What, what do they know about what I'm going through right now or how things have changed. It is notoriously difficult yep. to change an old mind. And we need minds that can change right now because right now we're all in our corners. We all believe the things we believe. We're all fighting each other for those beliefs, yep. but none of those beliefs are right. I mean, some of them here and there are right, but the core concept 
that somebody has already gotten it right. And particularly the, the idea that's one of these two political parties is abject nonsense. It's just simply not true. And we're acting like it is because you only defend things. The, the, a smart person will only defend something they believe in, right? So for warriors, we knew that the wars were fucked up. So we started fighting for each other. And maybe we always were in some way. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's definitely a calling to be, to be a soldier or Marine or whatever. Um, but maybe in some way, despite all the patriotism and all the other stuff, what we learned, and I can say it, I def, this is definitely true for myself, what I learned very quickly is it didn't really matter. Once you got into the fight, it doesn't matter anymore. Only thing that matters is the people around you and taking care of them. And then that's when I really started thinking about, well, what do I do with that when I get back home? What do I do with the instinct to take care of the people around me when I get home? How far do I extend that? How, how, how wide can I open my arms and how many people can I pull under that blanket? And I definitely don't think, particularly in today's climate, that these old people have any relevance in politics. I, I don't agree. think anybody over, if you're, if you're of retirement age, retire, go yeah. home. We're done with you. Thank you for your service. Collect your social security check and get the fuck out of the way. Cause we got shit to do, man. We have things to do. We need to fucking find a better renewable energy source because we don't have one right now. Wind doesn't work. Solar is not good enough. We can't store enough energy for it. All these other things. Uh, uh, fracking is not as bad as a lot of people say it is, but it does put a lot of methane gas in, into nearby water supplies unintentionally. So that's a problem too. It's just not a perfect solution. Nuclear has got problems as well, and we need more of it for it to be efficient like that. And can you can can our energy infrastructure that's deplete or uh, that's decrepit right now because they won't upgrade it because they're greedy are we really going to trust them to start building more nuclear facilities we need to find answers to this we don't have time to sit around and and bicker over over fucking a couple hundred million dollars honestly we just don't have time for this shit with these old ass people right now the reason if you're sitting at home and you don't have your next twelve hundred dollar stimulus check it's because donald trump and Nancy Pelosi have not allowed it to happen. Yep. That's the only reason these two people that are 74 and 82 respectively, these two old people that don't know shit about real life because they've been rich and in power for years are affecting your ability to pay your bills right now. And all they have to do is shut the fuck up and get something done. And that can happen right now. My, I personally think that Pelosi's got more uh, to do with this not happening right now than Trump does. But either way, these two old people that are irrelevant in every other way are affecting your day-to-day -day life right now. And they don't see it because they've never been where you are. And that's a problem. We need to get people right off the street. People that have learned a lesson recently. So it still means something to them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I want the person in power who struggled the most recently because they know what the struggle yeah. is. But here's what, I'm, here's what I'm gonna tell you the problem is, the only way we fix this is if younger, start, younger people start voting. Yeah, I mean, so, it so so you know seventy so sixty five percent of voters in twenty eighteen. Let's just go back to the, the election for so twenty sixteen. Let's go twenty sixteen. The uh, seventy percent of voters. What age do you think they were? Uh, like their average age. Yeah, probably thirty one. Sixty plus. Thirty oh thirty percent or sixty. Seventy percent, sixty plus voted. 70% of the voters were 60 or, or older. That's what it's saying right here. Which site is that? That can't be right. Uh, it is electionproject.org. Mm. Voter turnout, turnout demographics. 70 plus. I mean, it is, it is notorious. 60, 60 plus was 70%. Yeah. Um, people 35, just say, just say 44 and below were just a little bit over 50%. Uh, 18 to 29 was around 40 percent only 40 percent of that age group voted mm -hmm. is what you're saying yep that's not great no no so you wonder i mean why. you're the, you're also the by the way you guys out there that are 18 to 29 you have the most to lose or gain by applying your political power we have the longest to put up with yeah. the shit that these people in power yeah. like the decisions they make i mean you you can't afford to do it here's what we can't trust like you saw how, whatever you want to say about people like Tulsi Gabbard and, and, and Buttigieg, and then on the right, there are some younger candidates as well. Although the younger candidates on the right seem to be doing way better. Uh, like uh, the, the kid, I can't remember his name in, uh, 
in North Carolina. He's in a wheelchair. He's 27. I think he's running for Congress. I think he's doing pretty well. Our buddy out in uh, Oregon's doing pretty well. Yep. Uh, it's, you know, it is very unlikely that an old person is going to vote for a young one. Well, of course not. They don't trust them. No. So you, if you want these young voices in government, yes. you have to go out and put them in yourself. Yep. That's the only way it's ever going to happen. And the only way that's going to happen is if, I mean, look, you need, you can't do it alone, but when the establishments as they are as such, uh, figure out that you have decided to become energetic and apply your power, then they have to start recognizing and dealing with your power, For sure. which means they have to come get your vote somehow. They have to convince you, For which sure. means you're going to get more uh, information, but also you have more sway when it comes time for all these elections that are happening. So obviously the best way is to get involved. The other best way is to, uh, again, and I'll say this, this is, this is the answer to any question really, but challenge the way you think. When you see somebody like, let's say, I don't know, a 31 year old ran against Ted Cruz in a primary in the Republican party in Texas. Right. And his or hers, I, her ideas were infinitely better mm -hmm. than Ted Cruz. There's very little chance that that person would win For because Ted Cruz name ID and because people are lazy and because there's a lot, a lot How of about this? Look at Mitch, here's one we're looking at right now. Mitch McConnell. Yeah. The guy it's, you can't like, Everybody knows he's bad in Kentucky, but you can't beat him because they this power that Kentucky has mm -hmm. with him being the majority leader, they won't get yeah. rid of him. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, it, the only way to, uh, and it's why I, I always say I, I kind of have to defend the America First stuff, stuff, not that we should ignore the problems of other people or countries, but we can't help if we're not in a position to help. Yeah, you know what sure. I mean? Like every time you've ever been on an airplane, what do they say? Put your fucking oxygen mask on before you help somebody else. Every single time that I've ever been on a plane, that's been said. And that is absolutely true. Now, in this context, if you want to help yourself and help America by getting more young people involved in politics, then you have to either get involved in politics yourself or you have to make sure that you and everybody you know is voting and taking into consideration the qualifications of people without regard to their age. Like, Why would somebody be better at being a congressperson because they're 60 versus 35? doesn't make any sense, right? There's no intrinsic value. Maybe they have more life experience, but what has their life experience taught them that is relevant today? For sure. Not much, right? No. So come on, man. That stuff is stupid. So stupid. All right. Well, listen, we had another badass episode. What episode is this? Uh, this is number five. Number five. Yep. Dan, what is your signing off going to be? Um, well, I've got one more thing to talk about. We talked earlier about civil service and its importance. Uh, if you remember the show Starship Troopers, I've never seen it. Uh, service, it, it's it's a kind of a goofy B movie. Starship Troopers. Yeah, everybody else that's listening to this has heard of it. I can't imagine why you have it, but what? in the movie, there's they're like at war <laughs> with some space bugs or some shit. And a 1997 film. Yeah, to um, in order to gain citizenship in their country, yeah, you had to serve in the military, right? Hmm. And the only way you could vote or gain citizenship is to serve. Um, I guess that's an interesting idea. And I, and I wonder, is it wrong to expect people to do something besides simply exist to earn the vote? Or is it just a right? Is it really a right or should it be a privilege? And I wonder about that. Now, if you make it a privilege, so, so then you, whomever sets the rules for what defines a privilege can fuck with that in some way. That's definitely something you should look out for. Everybody should get the vote, I guess. Right? Yeah, I mean, it's a right. It's a right that's fought for, right? I mean, it's a... I mean, we... <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, But I, what, I, a, what other right do you not have to keep fighting for? I mean, so here's, here's, my, so here's my piece of it is, and, and we talked about the other, this the other day. You don't agree with this. Mm. Um, if you don't pay taxes, you don't get to vote. So because like if you... And, and here's my sim simple piece of that is, is... If you don't pay taxes, you don't get to vote. And my, my reasoning behind that is, is do you think it'd be okay if you got to tell the people in my, my employees what to do? No. Your money doesn't even go to them. Like it, it's my money. I pay them, not you. So right. why would you get to tell them what to do? So why, if your money, if you're not, if you're not getting, you're not invested if your money's not going to it. Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, 
until relatively recently. I mean, the Constitution outlines voting in Article 1, Section 2. So if you want to go read that, uh, it's interesting. It gives the states uh, the ability to vote in delegates who then control who votes. They Like the states had complete autonomy to decide who voted Man, back then. I, I promise you, if I was elected, hmm? you can quote me today. If I was elected, I would bring up every major issue with the American people, mm -hmm. right? So abortion, you all vote on it. Let's bring this up as a nationwide yeah. vote, right? You talk about, um, 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 you talk about, uh, what was I saying? Term limits. Mm -hmm. Let the American people vote on it. You talk about going to war. Right. I think I think the federal government should be able to decide that. But I think that if the American people want to vote on it, they get to vote on it. Right. So like I represent the American people. Right. So like uh, what I would do is like even if I was a congressman, especially with technology the way it is today, mm -hmm. think about this. If I was a congressman or a senator or whatever, whatever it is, if I was if I was an elected official, everything that was a major vote. I would turn around and I would throw that back on the American people and I would say, hey, look, you can vote for this. Right. <clears throat> like American they, Idol. Uh, yeah. Like you Press can. Press seven. Boom. Turn around. Like it, my district, like let me ask you this. Why do senators, with the technology we have, why do senators, Republicans, Democrats, senators, all of them, why do they not have their district, their people who are doing that on an app mm -hmm. to where this, hey, this issue's up, these people can vote on it. So then when that person calls in and says, Hey, why did you vote this way? You were like, "Hey, I'm getting ready to go vote, so I'm voting on this at on the floor at three right. o'clock today." They shove it out, a text out to mm -hmm. all their people. They can vote on it and tell them which way they want to go, and they they follow that. I mean, if there was a secure way to do that, that'd be great. I'm not sure yeah. there is right now. Well, Where I, the I, ran and China lighten up our fucking cell networks and our ISPs every single day. But yeah, it's interesting to think about that. You I know, gotcha. what, it wasn't until 1964 that the concept of one human being has the right to have one vote in America was really true. You here's, know what I mean? Like that, what, it wasn't until, how, how long ago was that? That was uh, 46, man, so uh, 66 years. Here's what I can tell within you. Within our parents' lifetime, some of us. Here's what I can tell you, is if you can go and you can transfer money over the internet, mm -hmm. if you can go and do all this other shit, I promise I would at least use this as a as a guide to what I'm doing. How many right. how many senators, and how many, how many people are doing that? I don't think anybody would be doing it. And the, the problem with, I mean, you could absolutely do something like that. Why, and doing, why wouldn't you? Doing something like changing what it means to have the right to vote requires a constitutional amendment at this point, and that's not happening. I mean, because but, there's no way that the right and left would both agree enough to make but, that happen. But we don't even have to do that. I think if you start letting people vote, like letting letting your people get involved on the vote, I think right. you start getting younger people involved on it, right? Yeah. When, I mean, and I mean, you got to talk to people where they have conversations well exactly you know right I mean? hey i want to know why why you don't feel like this vote's going the right way right. right and then you have something to fall back on but i also think and i wrote this down earlier and i've said this to you before mm -hmm. um one of the biggest things i would push if i went in and we got it when we get elected um bills i, I would outline what bills can look like right no writers no that bullshit no writers Bills are single issues only. Mm. I don't care if we got to sit in the Senate on the floor all day long and we have to vote a hundred times to get all these things out that you could have put in one bill. Yeah. You are going to specifically, the bills have to be specific, objective, just like a warning order, right? right. What is the mission of this? Yeah, situation, mission. Yeah, I, I think- uh, SMEAC would be the exact way that they'd do it. Yeah, it's a good idea. It's uh, You got to wonder why we treat our politicians with such reverence. You work for me, motherfucker. And what yeah, other and what, what other saying. organization would I go down to the line and worship and ask for permission from people who work for me? You work for me, bitch. Why would I walk in and tell you how to feel? Yeah, that's the dumbest shit of all time. One user actually asked, this is an interesting question too, and it kind of come, it goes down the same road of what you were saying. He asked, what about the individual's ability to vote and whether it should be affected by how much they contribute to the tax base? Now- that is an interesting idea, but no. you can already see the problems with that, yeah. right? No, it's the I same, don't. same reason you couldn't do it the other way. We've had issues in the past with things like poll taxes and literacy tests that were designed specifically to exclude minority voters. Uh, and I'm guessing the Supreme Court figured out the same when they ruled Harper versus uh, the Virginia Board of Elections, which is where 
tax payment or wealth requirements. Like what you were saying, you have to pay taxes. Like the Supreme Court's already ruling that you can't yeah. do it. I mean, I don't think that's, I think it's not a solution, but it is an interesting thing to think about because it begs the question, like who should be voting and who shouldn't. And yeah, what I, should be the, I, I just don't, I don't think that like, I, I, I don't think, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think that that makes, I don't think that's like, a, I, I, so I don't, I personally don't think that's a good idea, right? I mean, I no, don't no, think you should have not. to make, a, I mean, I think then, then guess what you do? Guess what you just turned the voting system back on the emphasis of. Yeah, there's now there's green, a profit motive. Green. Yeah. Right. That goes so, back to green. Yeah, and that you can't, you can't do that. I mean, I, obviously, if if a society is going to be truly judged by how well it treats its weakest, yeah. poorest, whatever you want to call it. That's not going to happen that way. That is the foundation for an oligarchy. Anytime I, you do something. I'm telling like you that. this. I'm telling you this. We talk about, I just talked about how if you want to look at the true mirror of how you live life, right? You know, you, you look at your kids. I don't think the two people, I don't think the last two elections, I don't think the last two elections um, with the options that we had, mm -hmm. I don't blame. Donald Trump, Hillary. I don't blame Donald Trump, Joe Biden right now. I think that right now, that the people that we have up there that we have as our options right now mm. are a direct reflection of the give a shit that we as the American people have gave. And I think it's a direct reflection of who we are as a society right now. And right. I think it's time for us to look in the mirror and it's time for us to say, I'm going to start living a better way. Mm. I'm going to start doing what's right. I'm going to start helping other people. I think Donald Trump and Joe Biden are so selfish. And I think that they're both egotistical. They're both narcissists. Mm. And I think that they're both human beings that represent the majority of us in America and how we've been living our life and doing, doing our jobs in America and how we've been treating each other. I think Joe Biden, look, you look at Donald Trump. Let's talk about Donald Trump, our leader, mm. the last four years. The man's tweeting out all kinds of crazy shit, mm. arguing with everybody, right? Yeah, he yeah, he might be doing some good things. I got you, right? I mean, both sides. Both sides. Let's just go all the way down through our leadership in Congress. Mm. Both sides acting like a bunch of a children. bunch of children yeah. arguing and, and pointing out, you oh, you're doing this or you're doing that, right? Instead of getting to work. Right. Who does that sound like social media for right now? Most of us as Americans. Yeah. Most of us just bitching. It does. Yeah. I mean, at some point you've got to take some responsibility. I think that's the, I think it's why this type of change is so slow because yep. if I, if there's a bunch of bullshit on the ground and we all just maintain eye contact and don't look at it, then nobody's responsible for cleaning it up. But the first person to look over there makes us all responsible for cleaning it up. Absolutely. And, so we've put these blinders on yep. and uh, they come in the form of partisanship and the single vote, uh, single issue voters and things like that, uh, that have driven us directly into the ground. So I, in closing, I wanted to ask, uh, we've talked about where we are right now quite a bit today. Yeah. Uh, where do we want to be four years from now, regardless of who wins this election, where can, where can we be four years from now? I think people need to take the power back from their government. I don't care about your political party. I don't yeah. care how you feel about single issues like abortion or any of that shit. It's not about that. Those are things that can be decided, sure. But learning how to think is more important than learning what to think. And taking your power and exercising your individual liberty as an individual in America is what makes America the greatest country in the world. And we've not been exercising that. Yes because we've been kept from doing it in some instances, but we've refused to step up and do it when we could yep. in a lot of cases. So I think there's only one way we can accomplish something like this. And that is you have to be honest with others and yourself. You have to be willing to admit when you're wrong. You have to be magnanimous when you find that somebody else is wrong and make sure that the lesson they learn is that the right answer and not to hate you. Yes. You know what I mean? Don't be a fucking dick all the time. Yeah. It's just unnecessary to do that. I, I get in these conversations on the internet. I, I, I get in debates and arguments all the time <clears throat> and people will lash out and say mean shit and blah, blah, blah. I just ignore it. You know, it's not, that's not part of the conversation to me. It's easy for me to do that. I understand people get emotional when about this stuff, but it's easy for me personally to do it. And I, I'm thankful for that because it helps me, but you can't diagnose and fix an issue with half truths and cognitive dissonance. It won't well, so, work. so let me tell you this, the most, the biggest lie 
the biggest uh, misconception or or, or uh, misleading piece in the words you just said was half truth. Mm. Half truth is a lie. Correct. Yeah. There is no truth in a half truth. You can't. You can't be half truthful. It's either. It's either truth or a lie like right. it's it's neither it's 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 do you, do, there is no such thing as a no, half of truth not. no there's there's a level of confirmation bias that happens in the in the public discourse in america that is i mean it's naturally going to fall into into binary politics right yes. because people if you see it the and you know you're out there because i've done this myself i know i've done it mm -hmm. and i'm a pretty open-minded guy so i know a lot of other people are doing it to you when you see a headline, you have you already form an opinion. Like I guarantee you, there are headlines you've clicked on because you thought they were going to say something you agreed with, and headlines you skipped past because they said something you wouldn't have agreed with. Now those headlines can be misleading in today's media. That's there's no question about that. But you're going to find two or three paragraphs of truth in each one of those articles, and you should feel good about receiving the information. You should not feel bad if the information disagrees with your worldview. That does not make sense. No. It doesn't make sense to react to new information that way, intellectually speaking, and certainly not from a scientific method standpoint. The, the, the more frequently you get consistent data, whether it's showing you're right or wrong, then you are closer and closer to the best possible answer, and the best possible answer produces the best quality of life for everybody here. That is what you should be doing. Get, who gives a fuck about about elephants and donkeys i don't give a fuck about these people jesus christ man why are we even still talking about this yeah. shit why it doesn't make any sense to me that we're even still talking about this it has no relevance in today's world whatsoever and it only starts with people like you and the audience holding yourself and other people accountable you're gonna fuck up i fuck up all the time i say things that are wrong i have to go back and correct myself but you know what i just learned something and i probably won't say it wrong again you can do that too. I'm not a fucking superhero. I'm just some asshole that pays a little bit of attention because it's my job too. But you can do it too. It's not difficult to do this stuff. You just have to change the way you think. It takes 21 days to create a lifelong habit. 21 days of doing the same thing over and over. So do this every day for the next 21 days. Go on to the, whatever you consider the opposition's media page to be, whether it's CNN or Fox or whatever. Read a couple of articles and truly absorb the information look for the part that you think is fake but try to find the facts in there and if you do that that will become your instinct your instinct will become skepticism and you will learn how to think instead of what to think absolutely and that that will be a that will improve your life dramatically and it will improve this country dramatically as well well man i couldn't have finished it better myself i guess we're You're finished the then we never have an outro on these we things. Never. We're just like, oh, all right, we're done. See yeah, ya. We're done. Right, I, I respect it a lot, so it's, it makes sense for yeah, me. Yeah, I think it makes good. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll, all we'll right, see. All right, thanks, y'all. See y'all.